no extension of the other two cases. So we now know how to name uh, metal ions, so whether they have multiple options for their charge or not. Uh, and now we're going to talk about uh, polyatomics, and polyatomics, pretty much, you just memorize their names, uh, and that's all there is to it. So this is the ammonium ion, this is the sulfate ion, and it becomes ammonium sulfate. Uh, and you do have to use, uh, since it's plus one uh, here, and you need two of them, when you crisscross the charges, you wanna make sure that you know that you're getting all two of the ammoniums, and so you have to put a parenthesis around the whole ammonium ion. Let's move on then to molecular covalent compounds. These are going to be uh, molecules, what we've talked about, that have covalent bonds, something really we haven't talked much about. But they're made of two or more nonmetals. And when you do that, there are oftentimes many options for the compounds that can form. And that's why we need number prefixes. And our number prefixes are right here. Again, something we've gone over in the lecture outline. Um, and our, the name is going to be, so the Greek prefix and the first nonmetal, plus the Greek prefix and the base name of the second nonmetal and IDE. And you'll see that this is the way they're listed in, in compounds. The less electronegative element is first followed by the more is first followed by the more electronegative element. We haven't talked about electronegativity yet, but uh, you'll see all the compounds in the proper form for now, and we'll learn about that later. When there is only one atom of the first element, the mono prefix is omitted. When oxygen requires a prefix, uh, the last vowel of the prefix is omitted if it is an A or an O. So as examples, so uh, CO becomes carbon monoxide, so there is no mono before the first one, and uh, first one there's only one, and monoxide, if you're tempted to write that, try and say it. So when you say it, monoxide, I don't know, eventually maybe it'll seem hard. Maybe it's a rule that we remember and then we keep saying them until we uh, hear that that sounds odd, so monoxide to me sounds better. Hmm, it's a process. Um, and the one I really remember that we're familiar with to help with actually that first rule, that no mono, is CO2 is carbon dioxide. And that actually helps with uh, both of the, well, not the exception, but so since it's carbon and we know that there's no mono before anything that has one of the first element. And dioxide helps us know that there are number prefixes for these types of compounds. And we have a couple of examples there, a couple of compounds that are made of nonmetals that you just have to learn their common names. Their common names are their IUPAC names, which doesn't happen often, but uh, these are four examples for this course. Now, uh, name the following compounds. So for, I check it out. My process for this is I look for a metal. I don't see a metal. I don't see ammonium. That means this is a molecular or covalent compound. That means I need number prefixes, right? So that's, that's our process is we're sorting the ionic ones from the covalent ones, and then we're using each naming scheme. So N2O4, that's two nonmetals. That's going to be dinitrogen. Tetroxide, tetraoxide, but you take out the a tetroxide. We have sulfur dioxide here. No mono. Again, we have a one uh, of the first elements, phosphorus. Five is going to be pentachloride. And nomenclature is the one time in this course where spelling counts. So take your time with these. Uh, sulfur, trioxide, and the I's never get cut. It's just the A's or the O's if there's two of two vowels in a row. 
Now working backwards, we've got iodine, no prefix, so that's just going to be a 1. Penta is 5, and bromine, bromide, Br5. Oxygen difluoride, again, none of the first one. All of these actually only have one for the first one, which is common, but not quite that common. Uh, chlorine dibromide and carbon tetrachloride for chlorines attached to a carbon. Last case we want to talk about are the diatomic molecules, the seven diatomic elements. We have also called them. Uh, the element name refers to the diatomic molecule. For example, hydrogen refers to H2. If you wanted to say hydrogen just H, you would say hydrogen atom or atomic hydrogen, which does happen. We do see that from time to time. But H2, hydrogen refers to H2, oxygen refers to O2. If we mean the atom, yes, we say atomic hydrogen or atomic oxygen. List the seven elements and their states as they that exist as diatomic molecules. Well, let's go ahead and do this. So remember from the periodic table, we have hydrogen way over here, which is one of them, and then the other six of the seven make the shape of a letter seven. So it's going to be hydrogen, H2, N2, O2, F2, and down. And I'll just write that out. H2, so N2. I'll leave a little space so we can write the phases in because it does ask for phases. Br2 and I2. Now, uh, the only solid is iodine. The only liquid is bromine. And the rest of them are gases. And you don't have to write them like this. Anything that helps you remember them, anything that helps me remember them, is something that I like to do when I can.